So we're here today to talk about the Idex CBC. One thing with Idex is you can get the same CBC in-house on your ProSite DX or in the lab, uh, in the reference laboratory there, you're getting the same information from both of them. One thing that's really important when we're considering the CBCs is reticulocytes and some of the parameters associated with them. You know, we all know that reticulocytes are a marker of regeneration. So if we have a patient that's anemic, um, the reticulocyte count is going to give us direction as to whether it's a regenerative or a non-regenerative anemia. That's going to influence our further diagnostic steps and it's all going to, also going to influence how we manage that patient. Um, keep in mind that um, sometimes it takes, you know, for the reticulocytes to develop in the bone marrow, um, the, the full maturation time is five to seven days. So if we have a really acute onset of anemia, it's going to take two to three days to start to see reticulocytes in circulation. So with a really acute anemia, we may have what we call a pre-regenerative anemia. So, if we have a patient that's anemic with increased reticulocytes, we know it's regenerative, so we've got a hemorrhagic problem or hemolysis causing that. So we can then take further steps like looking at the blood film, looking at protein levels, looking at bilirubin, all that sort of thing to try and help us determine if it's hemorrhage or hemolysis. Keep in mind that we can also sometimes see reticulocytosis without anemia. So you can have a patient with a normal hematocrit, but you see an increased reticulocyte count with that. There are a couple of reasons that that can happen. First of all, it may be physiologic. The reticulocytes can hang out in the spleen while they're maturing. So if, if the patient gets anxious, catecholamines are released and they get splenic contraction, we may get an increased reticulocyte count in the blood. But we also need to consider in some patients that reticulocytosis is a marker of underlying disease. So they've got some degree of hemorrhage or some degree of hemolysis, but they're still able to produce enough reticulocytes to keep their hematocrit in the reference range. VetConnect Plus is a great way to try and get some sense of what's happening here. If we look at that patient's history, their red cell count tends to be, or red cell mass, tends to be pretty stable. So if this is a patient that's at the same hematocrit it has been in the past, it's always had some reticulocytes when you've done a CBC, it's probably more likely physiological. Whereas if you look back at that history and the previous hematocrits have been higher without reticulocytosis, now even though it's still within the reference interval, the uh, hematocrit has dropped, then we've got to be more concerned about underlying hemorrhage or hemolysis causing that and that warrants further investigation. Um, well, we'll sometimes also see increased reticulocytes in patients that are developing erythrocytosis. So if the red cell mass is at the high end of normal or above that, we need to consider they maybe have cardiorespiratory disease causing hypoxemia, occasionally things like renal masses producing erythropoietin or primary bone marrow disease producing too many reticulocytes. Another thing we need to consider is reticulocyte haemoglobin, which is a more recent parameter that we've started reporting on the ProSite and now in the reference laboratory as well. Reticulocyte haemoglobin is a marker of iron availability for red cell production. It's always been a challenge for us to try and determine iron deficiency in the past. Serum iron levels are really only just reflecting what's passing through the blood at that point in time. They're not a marker of storage. The iron panels that they do in people are notoriously unreliable in dogs and cats. We sometimes look at the um, red cell indices like mean cell volume or mean cell haemoglobin concentration. The challenge with those is, you know, in a dog, the red cell survival is about 100 days, maybe 70 to 80 days in a cat. So because they're at average of the cell size, it's gonna quite take quite a bit of time for those to drop when iron availability reduces. Whereas reticulocyte haemoglobin is looking at cells that have been produced in the last few days and are only in circulation for a couple of days. So it's giving us a much more acute indication of the availability of iron. So there are a few reasons that reticulocyte haemoglobin can be low. It can be true iron deficiency. 
So a patient with bad GI disease that's not absorbing iron, or a patient with chronic blood loss. So external or internal parasites, bleeding masses, um, bleeding GI lesions, and that's going to cause iron deficiency. It can also be a reflector of inflammation. Um, with uh, you know, cytokines being released with inflammatory disease, a protein called hepcidin gets produced. And what it basically does is it traps iron in the enterocytes, in the macrophages, in the hepatocytes, so it's not available to, for erythropoiesis, so the reticulocyte haemoglobin can drop. We also sometimes see it uh, with portosystemic shunts, not very common, but we might see that. We can also see it in some of the uh, certain breed related situations. Some of the Asian breeds of dogs like Japanese Akitas, Shiba Inu, some Sharpays. Um, if, if they're the dogs, if they're in that group that are naturally microcytic, um, they can also have a low reticulocyte haemoglobin with that as well. We occasionally see it in very young animals too.